Guys, when it comes to your performance in table tennis, mindset is everything. Your mind is what allows you to improve, and your mind is also what stops you from improving. Kanakja honestly believes that he can beat the top players in the world. So, he lives, he trains, he performs in accordance with that belief. And guess what? He can. The same thing is true for you as well. I'm convinced, no matter how much talent you have, that you too can make good improvement, but it starts with having the right mindset. Today, I'm gonna address six primary myths that are actually stopping many players nationwide from improving. Myth number one is that you have to play with better players. You have to play with better players if you're going to get better. I could give hundreds of examples why this is a false myth. One example is Nandan. So Nandan in November, he was high 2400s. He played with people that were in the 24 to 2500 range. And then by April, he's nearly 2700, 2686. What in the world? If he was 2686, he must have been playing with 2700 players every day. No, he wasn't. He was playing with people at his level or lower than him and was able to jump two levels. Why? because he was able to implement a lot of the things that he had been training. He was able to implement a lot of his own things on the opponent. As you've heard from many top players in the world, sometimes when you're playing better and better and better players, it's almost like deer in the headlights or you're just hanging on for the ride. It's hard to develop your own game. Most players nationwide have this assumption that they can't improve at all if they're playing with somebody equal or lower than them. And guess what? They act according to that belief. You'll see them play with a higher player and they are fully focused. You see them play with somebody 100 points lower and guess what? They lower their own standard for what's acceptable and therefore they don't get anything out of the practice. The second myth is more practice. More practice, more practice, more practice. Again, I could use a lot of examples, but let's use Nandana as another example. I know how much he practices. He practices here. He practices far less than most of the other players on the national team and still has great results. Why is it that he can practice less but still have good results? Well, more practice of doing the wrong things doesn't necessarily mean to better performance. Shorter practice sometimes is more effective if it's targeted, if it has specific measurable goals and you're actually working towards specific things. Every practice, every drill, every rally, every hit has to have a theme and all these small goals need to work towards your ultimate goal. That's why developing a playing system is so important. I've talked a lot in other videos about developing a playing system or a playing style. How do you develop a playing system? Well, it starts by understanding your own strengths what serves work good, what receives work good, what sequences work good. Once you understand your own playing system, it's easy to build off of it. I have a lot of people criticize Nandan as far as, oh, he has this weak point and this weak point and this weak point. Yes, but his strong strengths are quite strong and his playing system and his style are quite strong. I personally feel that if the US is going to become top level in the world, yes, we have to be able to fix weak points, but we've got to have strong strengths that are stronger. Having a normal serve, a normal return, a normal block, a normal kind of loop, everything normal, allows the other guy to play normal as well. But having strong strengths and forcing your playing system on them really hinders them from playing well. The third myth is having perfect strokes aren't basics super important? Well, they are, but there's a lot of examples that I could use. Nandan, again, doesn't have perfect strokes. Uh, Kanak doesn't have perfect strokes. Harimoto, watch the video online of Harimoto when he's 11 years old and he beat Jens Lundqvist, okay? When he beat Jens Lundqvist, one of the top players in the world at the time, how good were his strokes? They weren't good. A lot of times people will say, well, within the first few years, the strokes have to be perfect. No, they don't. They don't have to be perfect. There are some foundational things to the strokes that need to be good. You need to be able to link backhand and forehand. It needs to be adjustable. It needs to be flexible to deal with different types of balls. You need to develop a fairly relaxed technique. There's a lot of elements that are important, but the strokes don't have to be perfect. 
what ends up happening a lot here in the US is people try to develop the perfect strokes without really understanding the game mindset or how to implement those strokes in match play. So what ends up happening is as a kid, their stroke quality is over 2000 level, but their rating is 1400. So they develop this mindset from themselves, from other players, from parents, from coaches, that I'm not good in games. I'm not good in games, right? The, the parent will say, wow, his strokes are so good, but he can't win. So he develops his phobia from a young age that I can't win. Think about Kanak. Does he really care how pretty his strokes are? Strokes are important, footwork's important, but he knows he can win. Same thing for Harimoto, same thing for Nandan. Nandan is not that concerned with the technique. He's more concerned with, am I able to force my game on them and win the match? So even though developing good strokes initially is important, making sure that those strokes can carry over to match play and are useful and are applicable in games, this is actually more important than, have the, than having the picture perfect, perfect technique in front of a mirror. The fourth myth that's really important to get over is formula. There is not, I'm gonna repeat this again, there is not a formula as far as if you're at this age and this rating and you practice this much, you'll get to this level. Next week I'm going to the US Nationals with some of my students and also my kids and I promise you the number one question people are gonna ask my son is, how old are you? They're gonna ask that so much it's unbelievable. Are you six? Are you 10? Are you eight? Because in their mind, they want to be able to see, is my son going to be world champion? And if for some reason he's six years old, they're going to say, he's got great potential. And if for some reason he's 11 years old, they'll be like, ah, yeah, he's already behind. There's already 10,000 kids in China past that. You've got to stop saying that there's a formula. There's not a formula. One of the best players in the world is actually from Poland. He actually got to the top 20 in the world, and he didn't start table tennis until he was 15 years old. So if you can start at 15 and get to the top 20 in the world, guess what? There's not a formula as far as your age plus your rating plus how much you practice equals this. You gotta stop saying there's a formula. There are, however, instead of the formula, instead of the formula, let's tear this up, instead of the formula, there are secrets on how to shortcut the system. I'm gonna share one of those secrets with you. This one helped Andrew Tao a lot. He was improving about the same rate, and then when he learned this particular skill, he improved about 100 points in about two weeks. I'm gonna share it with you. There's three drill types. There's the type of drill, or let me just say, instead of three drill types, three mindsets. The first mindset is, I see where the ball's going, and I move, and I hit. The second mindset is, I don't know where the ball's going, I stay neutral, and then I react. The third mindset, and this is not taught very well, is that you can guess wrong and still hit the ball with quality. So we actually practiced this, Andrew and I practiced this for a couple weeks. I had him hit a backhand and then I had him guess wrong that the ball was to the wide forehand and he would have to jump and then still go back and make the full stroke for backhand. We did exactly the same thing for forehand, we did exactly the same thing for middle. I had him hit, he had to completely guess wrong, and then still move back and do the right thing. What did this do? This changed his mindset. Instead of thinking like, either I know where it's going and I can hit, or I'm neutral and I can hit. It was, I can guess wrong and still adjust and still hit. So there's hundreds of small secrets like this on how you can really improve your learning curve faster than everybody else. But as soon as you say there's a formula, I'm too old, I don't practice enough, I don't have enough practice partners, I don't have a higher enough rated coach, I don't have this, I don't have that. As soon as you say there's a formula, you've taken out about all your uh, potential to improve because the formula will almost always say that you cannot rise to the top in the world. The fifth myth is variety. Variety. People say, well, I can't improve unless I have a variety of training partners. This is actually one of the worst myths thinking that somehow when I have a variety of people that I'll develop an adjustable technique. But if I don't have a large variety of people to play with, then I can't develop it. This is actually quite false. The main thing is to develop a relaxed, adjustable technique that your stroke can adjust to every ball, that you can clearly see where on the table the ball bounces and you can adjust according to the bounce. 
Before I took Sarah to Europe for the first time, I actually told people, you know, she's going to go there and she's going to beat the European girls and she's going to win the WTT event. And they said, why? She's never played against them before. She's never been to Europe. How can she beat them when she's never played with them? And I said, yes, but Sarah has one thing really, really good. Sarah has an adjustable technique. So regardless if their ball is flatter or spinnier or a little bit shorter or a little bit deeper, she can see better than the other girls where the ball is and she can adjust more. So instead of saying, oh my goodness, I can't get good this year because I don't have a variety of training partners, say, I, I'm going to develop an adjustable technique. So no matter who I'm up against, I can adjust. In addition to uh, developing an adjustable technique, it's important to have serves, receives, and strong shots to make them adjust to you. If your playing system and your strengths are so strong, even if you can't adjust to a few of their shots, well guess what, it's an even playing field because they also can't adjust to some of your shots. And our last myth is talent. This is one of the big questions people ask all the time is, is my son or my daughter talented enough to reach the top level? Well, talent is a thing, but it's not the thing. There's many, 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 many examples on people that were less talented and rose to the top in the world. One of the best coaches in the world recently, I think it was actually last week, he told me, he said, you know, out of the professional level players, Sarah is probably in the bottom five or bottom 10%. I said, yes, but we went on to discuss the fact that she has dedication, she's coachable, and she has many other things that allowed her to surpass this fact of not being as talented or not having as much feeling or whatever as the other players and get better. There's many examples. Another example is a number of years ago when I was at a different club in a different state, there was one little tiny girl and she could not hit the ball. The ball's over here and she's doing this and this and this. And I told the coach, I said, aren't you wasting your time um, you know, coaching her because she really has no future in table tennis. There's zero coordination. She can't even hit the ball. Why are you spending your time? And he said, no, no, no. These things can be developed. And he was absolutely right because I saw her a number of years later and she was actually on the national team. I really didn't think that she would ever, 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 ever even break 800, but I was dead wrong. So in conclusion, I hope that these six myths are something that you can work through in your mind and kind of get over. There's a lot of stopping points for players on why they think that they cannot achieve this. Or there's a lot of stopping points for coaches on why they think their players cannot achieve it. There's a lot of stopping points for parents on why they don't want to invest the time and money into it. But I hope that these six myths really help to, um, to kind of overcome this. In conclusion, I just want to say that mindset is everything. And if your mindset is good and you have a good frame of mind, this will lead to great playing. It will lead you to go find a good coach. It will lead you to develop a playing system. It will lead you to develop strengths and really have a long-term perspective. Those people that have a long-term perspective and are able to work on a daily basis toward short-term goals, toward medium-term goals, and then toward the long-term goals, those are the people that really rise to the top. In conclusion, I just want to say one other thing, slightly unrelated, and that's daily note-taking. Daily note-taking is super, super important. There's three types of notes that I'd like to see you take. Type number one is just general reminders about table tennis. These are some general reminders that I have to do if I'm going to develop my game. Note number two are specific things, specific things that your coach recommended for you to do. These could be during group lessons or during private lessons, but very specific things that your coach recommended. And the third one, this one is not commonly done, is your own, your own observations. See, a lot of times people will say, well, he's my coach, or she's my coach, or he's my coach. Realistically, the coach can point you in the right direction, but you yourself know your mind, and you yourself should be your own personal coach. So if you take the approach that I'm going to wait for that guy to tell me stuff, you're not going to get as much out of your game. But if you t personally take notes, general notes about table tennis, advice from your coach, and then advice from yourself, you're writing your own observations, you're going to see good progress. I'm Samson Dabina. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message. I'll see you soon.